try to go through a single day without interacting with an AI agent. Think about it for a second. Do you think you can do it? From filtering our emails to personalizing our Netflix recommendations, AI agents are silently shaping our daily lives whether you realize it or not. And the thing is that most people don't even understand what the future holds with AI agents and how they're about to transform everything. So let's work on that. Let's start by understanding what AI agents are. So imagine having a smart assistant who can not only understand what you want, but actually take action to help you. That is an AI agent. But unlike the simple chatbots that you might be familiar with, these are more like digital employees who can observe, think and act on their own. I am going to break it down with simple examples, but before we get too deep, do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm AI understand that this is a good video to share with other people. Now, going back to the examples, think about a self-driving car. Just like any AI agent, it needs five key components. First is a user input. That's you telling the car where you want to go. This could be typing your destination or setting preferences to avoid the tolls. Then there's the world the car operates in, which is called the environment. The roads, traffic, weather conditions, everything around the car that it needs to deal with. Then the car sees the road, through cameras and radars, and those are called sensors. And the control center is a brain. This is where all the thinking happens, processing what it sees. Then the car actually drives. That's the ability to take action. Effectors are what actually make the car move. The steering, brakes, and acceleration controls. So think of these as the hands and the feet that carry out the brain's commands. And I gave you a more physical example, but it could also be a virtual environment where it carries out virtual actions that you can interact with online. So how has the AI agents changed over time and why is it such a big deal all of a sudden? So let's take a step back. I don't know if you're old enough to remember those old Windows paper clips that would pop up to help you write documents. That is an example of an early AI agent, pretty basic, often annoying, but it was just the beginning of AI agents. Fast forward to today, we've got AI agents that can do all kinds of things like write code for entire software programs. They can trade stocks in microseconds and even create art and music. And they look pretty damn good. So what triggered all these changes? Well, one of the biggest breakthroughs have been the development of large language models, LLMs, and multimodal models, LMMs. These are like super intelligent computers that can understand and generate human language, images, and other types of data. These models are so powerful because they've been trained on a massive amounts of data, allowing them to learn complex patterns and relationships in language. Now, not all AI agents are created equal. So let me break down the main types using real world examples you probably use every day. You can broadly categorize AI agents into two main categories, deterministic and non-deterministic. And within each category, there are two types of agents totaling to four. First are the simple reflex agents. They're like your basic spam filters. They can see something, they can react, but no memory and no learn. They basically follow simple rules like if an email contains a word, respond with a pre-written reply. And they don't remember the past or plan for the future. Second is the memory-based agents. They're smarter, they remember things. So like your Netflix recommendations, that's a memory-based agent keeping track of what you watch. Or smart thermostats, they learn your temperature preferences and act based on its memory. Now we're getting to the cool stuff, the non-deterministic category. There is the goal-based agents that can actually plan ahead and achieve specific goals. Think chess or Go AIs that can plan multiple moves in advance or GPS navigation that can plot the best route considering live traffic. And lastly, the really smart ones are called utility-based agents. They don't just follow goals, but they make trade-offs and complex decisions decisions like self-driving cars, balancing speed, safety, and passenger comfort, or AI trading systems that can manage an entire investment portfolio considering many different factors real time. So what are the advanced AI agents like nowadays? These are like supercharged versions of AI agents we've discussed earlier, but they have some specific key features 
like learning. They can learn from your interactions and improve over time. They can also remember past conversations and use them to understand you better in the future. Planning is another one. It can think through multiple steps to achieve a goal, and they can use other tools like real-time search engines for most up-to-date information, calendar tools or project management software to get more information, schedule events and manage tasks, making them even more helpful through utilizing a lot of different types of tools. And here's where it gets really interesting. Imagine all these different AI agents working together like a digital ant colony. We are already seeing this in smart homes where different devices coordinate together or financial markets where AI traders interact with each other. Other. even in supply chains where AI agents manage everything from ordering to delivery. Let's talk about why AI agents are such a game changer. First up, they're amazing at handling all those tasks that are really boring that we don't like doing. Things like paperwork and data entry. AI agents can do all that 24-7 without getting tired or needing breaks, making careless mistakes. In industries like healthcare, they're literally transforming how doctors work. It's like having an assistant that can analyze thousands of medical images in minutes and help the doctors spot potential issues early. They're especially valuable in areas where medical resources are more limited, helping doctors make better decisions faster. Education world is also seeing some really cool changes too. Think of having a personal tutor that adapts to exactly how each student learns. And while AI handles things like grading and progress tracking, teachers can actually focus on what they do best, inspiring students and providing that human touch in education. Okay, that sounds all great, but what are the risks that we should think about? Well, AI agents can introduce new types of malfunctions like generating answers that kind of sound right but actually are wrong and this is called hallucination and the reason why it's so difficult to detect is because kind of sounds right there are also socioeconomic risks of ai agents like human beings losing the ability to do stuff or think independently without ai or maybe we stop interacting with each other socially this already has been a big issue in some of the asian countries we need to also think about job displacement as AI takes over jobs or the black box problem. Sometimes we don't necessarily understand how AI got to certain decisions and we may never know. So whether you're excited or concerned about AI agents, they are already here and they're getting more powerful. So what can we do about it? We can think about improving information transparency, about how, why, and by whom the information is used. We also need public education and awareness, equipping people with a good understanding of AI agents' capabilities and limitations. We can also prioritize privacy and accountability to make sure that AI agents make the best decisions that align with human and societal values. And we will continue to see a lot of changes that impact our lives and our jobs. And now if you want to learn more about which jobs are rising in the age of AI and which jobs are struggling and maybe disappearing in the future, you can watch this video. And if you want to dig deeper about AI agents, check out the white paper by the World Economic Forum. I'll link it in the description. I'll see you in the next video.